Hey guys, welcome back to the hottest club in town. So today I wanna to do something I haven't done in a very long time, and that is pretty much make an entire video about one tweet. You're shopping at your local food market and you notice this young woman from behind. How do you open? At first I was really confused because I've always been under the impression that you can't open a bag of chips in the store, that you have to pay for it first, otherwise they'll get mad at you. But then I realized they're talking about the girl how do you open the girl? And then I spent the next 20 minutes scrolling through the joke responses and having the time of my life. Say, let me get that for you. And then climb up the shelves, pulling them down and injuring both of us. Tell her I'm exhausted from pushing around my shopping cart and ask her to push it while I ride in the children's seat. But the most accurate response I saw was, oh, excuse me, just gotta sneak right past you real quick. The original tweet was such a stupid question that got all of the mockery it deserved. But then I realized that nothing could be funnier than all of the genuine responses from guys who were like, I got this. I will answer this question and I will do it in the creepiest way possible. Do you know how many calories are in that bag? I'll eat them for you. We can't have the future Mrs. X getting fat, can we? Yeah, I think that'll go well. I think that's a good opening line to use on someone you've never spoken to before. You shouldn't eat those. What? Well, if you're gonna be my wife, I don't want you to get fat. That's a good point. Make sure I'm smelling nice. Brush close to her from her left side whilst picking one of the lay package, whatever that. Turn, gaze into her eyes with a warm smile and tell her I would have handed her that if it was written slay because she's slaying. That is weirdly choreographed. He even picked a side. Would it have been different if he came in from the right? Does he not want to get pepper sprayed in his good eye? It's a shame that that went the way it did because he got off to such a promising start. Make sure I'm smelling nice. Underrated first step. Though now I'm curious to know how he would have proceeded if he didn't smell nice. Run over to the deodorant aisle real quick or like go home and shower and hope that in 30 minutes she'll still be deciding on chips. Hey, did you know these are half off today? Check the coupon in the back. I don't see it. Should be there. Do you wear glasses? Ha, I do. Or maybe I need some, etc. By the way, you look familiar. Have we met? Should be able to get her from there. Oh yeah, dude, you are in. I think you've laid all the necessary groundwork here. I mean, at this point, the conversation practically speaks itself. I love how many of these are like that though, where they clearly lose steam by the the end and so they're just like eh, you get the idea this guy didn't even finish one sentence before giving up hey i like your style did you buy your outfits from the blah blah place you know one of those stores that sell girl pants i don't know i'm so tired this guy gave two options number one is it cheat date for you or have you tried Cool Ranch? Would you call it Cool Ranch? No, I, I've never heard of that, but it sounds delicious. What do you say we split a bag in my bed? At this point, you may be thinking that these are all so bad that surely they have to be jokes as well, right? I feel like the key to identifying genuine responses in a sea of satire is to look at their bios. If he describes himself as a business tycoon or a gentleman or, you know, some kind of alpha, he wasn't joking. This is his life. Occasionally, you'll hit the jackpot of Twitter bios. Cryptocurrency enthusiast and convicted felon. <laughs> well, at least he's proud of it. Like, I just can't imagine that an account called Red Pill Maestro that retweets pickup artists all day every day is doing some elaborate bit that only he is aware of. Hey, that's my bag. Thanks for getting them for me. I'll take them from here. Top shelf. Naughty. What's naughty about the top shelf? Is that where they keep all the sexy Doritos? Was just gonna ask if you would mind reaching the top shelf for me. I always struggle. Looks at me, obviously I don't. Hey, why not grab a bag for yourself while you're up there? The thing she was already doing until you snatched it out of her hand like a child? The best responses though are the guys like Bowtied Grey Wolf who initiates small talk about Doritos. Alternatively, you could try the snack similarity approach. Walk up, grab a bag, and say something like, these are my favorite. Glad to see someone else with good taste as well. Have you tried these? Pointed a different variation. Glad to see someone else with good taste as well. Have you tried the purple bag? I just woke up from a 60-year coma. You know, this might be a viable tactic if it was like some niche Trader Joe's snack, but they're talking about Doritos. The most common brand of chips. Oh, I love Doritos. Here, let me help you. I talk to women the same way I would talk to a stray dog. So a lot of great options to choose from, but I have a feeling the guy who tweeted it 
wasn't asking for advice. He doesn't need it. In fact, he's the self-proclaimed master opener of women, which either means that he's really good at starting conversations or he's literally opening women up. Um, so maybe just call the cops. After 4,000 approaches, I share my step-by-step sex escalation system to getting laid fast. Is the sex itself supposed to be fast? I don't need a guide on that. Also, 4,000 approaches? I find it telling that he's not leading with how many women he's successfully slept with, which would also be creepy, but just how many he's tried to talk to. But clearly with tweets like this, all he's doing is prompting Twitter outrage in order to plug his book called Conversation Casanova Mastery. If there's one thing I don't want to do, it's give money to this guy. But also I don't need to because all of these courses are exactly the same. You see hot girl and you want sex, but brain too stupid, you too stupid. For $20? I teach you how to talk good, and now you have girlfriend. Tempting, for sure, uh, but given that we've already seen his students in action, I'm gonna say this book is probably not worth the money. Speaking of which, his other business endeavor is called Womanese 101. Because if I want to know the language of women, I'm gonna ask some random dude. Women speak Womanese, a cryptic language that men have trouble understanding. Save yourself from years of pain confusion and heartbreak. Get the book now. I love that this guy is advertising a book that's supposed to teach you what women are saying, and I can't even understand what he is saying. If you are too sex to make a move on a woman that you like, the you are pathetic. Your ancestors fought in World War II. Oh my God. The first thing you can do to instantly raise your sexual market value is to get better at being a producer of emotions that women value, specifically fun, intrigue, and good emotions. Did Mark Zuckerberg write this? This is the absolute most robotic and insane way to say, Girls like guys who are fun. The best part about this account is you don't even have to come to the conclusion on your own that this is predatory. He literally describes himself as a predator. That's not a good thing. Needless to say, womanese is not exactly a hit with the ladies, which you know, sort of invalidates it altogether. This is how girls talk. No, it's not. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think I would know. But I read a little bit about it. What is it with pickup artists always implying there's some kind of anatomical secret to seducing women. Uncontrollable attraction within a woman's limbic system. Yeah, so if you look closely, you'll notice that all girls have a little knob on the back of their neck, and you're gonna wanna make sure that's turned over to the horny setting, otherwise you're not getting anywhere with them. Also, be unfuckable with. That is an amazing word, although I'm pretty sure they were supposed to cut out the last part. Anyway, after the resounding success of that first tweet, Mr. Casanova became so addicted to getting dunked on that he did it again. You're at a college house party and you notice this young woman leaving the female restroom. How do you open? I would have so many questions. Um, how did I get here? Which college is this? Can I go home? Where's my wife? And who has gendered bathrooms at a house party? You have a nice body by what I can see, but is the rest of it nice too? I don't know, is it? So the thinking with that is that she'll get defensive and then be like, yeah, it's nice here, let me show you. Oh, wait a minute, you got me. <laughs> You're such a renaissance man. I almost forgot, one of the responses I love the most to the original tweet was from an account called Got Pickup Lines App. So this is an entire app programmed to generate clever one-liners to say to women. The perfect tool for aspiring creeps. But with the power of technology on our side, this should be the best pickup line of them all. Uh, let's see what they came up with. See a cute girl looking at a food item, go over and grab the same item, look at her and say, aren't these good? These are so good. I wish I could eat them all day. Oh, they taste so good. Tums? The ultimate seduction tool. Have you ever thought to yourself, what should I say to her? What was that line I read? Sadly, what usually happens next is you end up staring at the girl without even talking to her. And yeah, bro, she sees that as creepy. But you know what's not creepy? Constantly stopping mid-conversation to look down at your phone and say whatever an app tells you to. So, uh, where'd you go to school? Uh, that's a 
Good question. You don't remember? No, I do. I just got to type in school. Type into what? University of Tennessee. Really? Because you're the only 10 I see. Holy shit. No, wait. I, I went to Yale. Seriously? I was worried if I told you, you'd think I was some kind of nerd. Because you went to a good school? No, that's like the only good thing you've said so far. Yeah, I, I, I guess it is. So what did you major in? Pussy. Oh my god. Then he goes on to cite a social experiment done by someone whose name he spelled wrong that allegedly confirms that you can teach someone how to flirt well uh, as long as they have higher social status. So if you're having trouble picking up women, just have a lot of money? Or be a prince? Now, if you were worried this website wouldn't turn into a rant against woke culture, don't be, because it does. Sure, us guys have had to change the way we communicate with females, both in and out of the workplace, especially when it comes to telegraphing sexual interests. We've learned to make verbal advances in code using covert language known as sexual innuendo. To be able to interact with women without triggering those who are more easily offended. Jesus Christ. I tell you what, sometimes it feels like you're not even allowed to grope your coworkers anymore without someone getting triggered. That's not called being triggered. That's being sexually harassed. Even if you're hitting on someone using covert language, like some kind of horny detective, that's still inappropriate. You're still gonna get reprimanded by your HR rep. You uh, wanna see me? Yeah, so I heard from Jessica that you've been telling her how much you want to put your hot dog in her bun? Uh-huh. You can't say that. Oh, what, a guy's not allowed to talk about food? Clearly you weren't talking about food. But I technically was. You also uh, apologized in advance if the mustard comes out too fast? It's a sensitive bottle. That's disgusting. You're fired. Fine, all right, I don't care. Oh, and by the way, Sorry I triggered you. Only on Netflix. Side note for anyone who needs to hear this, innuendos are not some sort of secret doublespeak that only geniuses can decode. Usually you're just coming up with a different word for penis. It's not any more clever than a 12 year old boy who ends every sentence with that's what she said. So anyway, now we're at a point where the how do you open tweets are just popping off left and right. So even more alpha male Twitter accounts are getting in on the action and somehow they're worse every time? You are in a restaurant with your friends where you spotted this hot girl on opposite table. How would you open? Well, I think we can all agree that there is only one right answer. You know, according to psychology, a person who sits alone in restaurant can be addicted to be alone. She replies, so what? Then I say, so I can help you to not get addicted to it. You're at the beach and it's sunset time. You notice this young woman vibing alone and you've identified that what she actually is doing is begging for your attention. How do you open? I'm sure we'll get some nice, normal responses here. Sup, mamas, me likey what I see. <gasps> what's your evening plan, babe? Maybe we can go back to my crib and see what's up. Oh, what's that? Why, yes, I am single, hee <laughs> hee. I know there's plenty of fish in the sea, but I never imagined I would find one so thick. She will smile slash laugh and say, are you calling me a fish? Don't respond. Wait, don't respond? But it was going so well. Don't respond, just ask her name and number. Trust me, she will give it to you. Trust me, she will say that. And she will give you her number. I'm sure of it. See, this is a problem with a lot of these guys' mindset. It's not just that they're enacting the protocol they learned in How to Be a Creep 101. It's that they've already planned out how the girl will respond. Like she doesn't have the free will to say something else. You can't script out both sides of a conversation. Your life is not a rom-com written by you. What if she doesn't say the fish thing? What if she's like, who are you? Or go away. Then what do you do? Panic? Ask the director to yell cut. This isn't a movie. But the reason they think that they can drive a conversation is because at their core, men like this don't view women as people. They're taught by all these sex crazed Twitter predators that if you just turn the right knobs and press the right buttons, then you'll be in control of her. Or as this guy put it, they treat women like they're NPCs whose sole quest line revolves around marrying you. Just look at some of these tweets that have 
Way too many likes for what they are. She's like a robot. She blindly follows her female psychology software program. Never take what a woman says or does personally. On an emotional level, she is just a child which is why we talk to them like one. Aww. She doesn't know what she truly wants, desires, or needs. She just goes along with the flow of the emotional moment. Unlike men, who are notoriously level-headed. Uh, I do want to point out a little bit of hypocrisy here, because on one hand, they'll say things like, you know, don't compromise anything for her. She doesn't deserve it. Show interest, not desperation. But also, you should take an astrology class because that's where girls are. Fuck what she thinks. What matters is what you think. Have supreme confidence in who you are and what you stand for. And then the very next tweet, like 20 minutes later, to establish a strong emotional connection with her, find what she's really passionate about in life and connect with her on that. Learn what she likes and pretend to like it too. Or wait, I thought, thought I was supposed to be myself. I'm so confused. Do I demean and belittle women or do I spend thousands of dollars on a class I'm not interested in just to be in the same room as boobs? But that's kind of the inherent irony to all these Twitter accounts where they're like, I'm a big strong guy. I'm in charge, I'm in control, and I have dedicated my entire personality to tricking women into talking to me. Jokes aside, all of this is genuinely disturbing. Not just that accounts like this exist, but that thousands of men follow them and hang on to their every word like some kind of incel religion. Being single is hard and getting your heart broken sucks, but there's not some secret you can buy to make women start falling all over you. And it's so much easier to deflect the blame onto every Everyone else than to admit that maybe you're the problem. Women are evil. They exist merely to torment me. And the problem with all these dating books is that they're capitalizing on those insecurities to make money off of lonely dudes. And then in the worst cases, it emboldens those men to blame women even more. Cause it's like, well, I bought the book. I did everything I was supposed to do and she still won't talk to me. They really are the problem. And now you're like this lunatic who approaches every interaction like it's some challenge to see who can be more manipulative. What a healthy dating life you have ahead of you. You're like a self-fulfilling prophecy on failed relationships. If I could offer any advice, it would be to just imagine that women are like uh, human beings, just like you. And then once you do that, you could try connecting with them person to person. And if she still doesn't like you, that's okay. At least you were authentic. Maybe she's just not the person for you. Try again. Don't just give up and start resenting all women because that shit's not gonna work either, no matter how much the Twitter guy told you it would. Oh, also don't hit on people in grocery stores. No one wants that. All right, well, I've been talking for a while. I can feel myself starting to lose some steam. So I think I'm gonna toss it over to pre-recorded me to take it from here. Hi, I'm trapped in a well, and I'm founder and CEO of pictureofhotdog.com, the world's most popular website that isn't porn. I get over 4,000 DMs every single day from people congratulating me on my one-of-a-kind creation. And today I just wanna say thank you. And I know. It's honestly better than Google. So to celebrate almost two years now of changing people's lives, I've decided to add yet another new topping, trophy. I couldn't have done it without you, hot dog, but I also couldn't have done it without the help of today's sponsor, Squarespace. So you wanna build a website, but you don't know how. That's where Squarespace comes in. They've got all the tools you could possibly need to turn your idea into a reality without having to know how to code or do web design. Just start out by picking one of their dozens of designer templates that'll make your website look great before you've even added content to it. Then you can pretty much just drag and drop. It's so easy, you'll wonder why you never did it sooner. You can spice things up by adding a video background, embedding audio if you have a podcast or music. You can add a comment section to hear feedback from people or have them insult a corn dog. And if you've got your own product, that you wanna sell using an online store, Squarespace is perfect for that too. Trust me, I've done it twice now. To get started with a 14 day free trial, head to squarespace.com slash Drew, and then when you're ready to launch your brand new beautiful website, use my code Drew for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video, and shout out to all the people who've used my code in the past to make a website, because you're the reason they keep supporting my channel. All right, now back to me from the future? Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Um, this is my second time recording the outro because the first time I did it, my microphone wasn't on. Anyway, thanks for making it to the end. If you liked this video, be sure to unsubscribe from me immediately and block me on every social media platform. I wanna end this one a little differently than I usually do, so I figured let's play a game of hide and seek. I'll go first. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, I'm counting to 100, eight, nine, see you guys next time, 10, 11, 11 and a half, 12, 13,